Mm -hmm. Well, how y'all doing? My name is Chuck. Uh, last year, my wife and I began a little bit of organic gardening in the backyard, and we were quite interested in that. And uh, we've decided here for the year 2011 that we're going to increase the size of the organic garden, try some interesting things, including a small greenhouse. But the one project that we want to work on that's kind of new to us in the last six weeks is the topic of aquaculture. And aquaculture is the raising of fish for consumption by people. And we're going to tie into that something called aquaponics, which is hydroponics. But the, uh, the water that feed the, feeds the, uh, the roots of the, uh, the vegetables, of course, will be the, uh, the wastewater uh, produced by the fish. So we used to take all that pee and poo from the fish and use it to make the plants grow. That's the overall concept. Well, I'd like to thank uh, all those folks on uh, YouTube who posted videos showing various configurations of how to get this started. So using the, the various models and doing a little bit of research and picking a, bu a book on aquaculture, I've done some reading. I just want to show you our little system, what we've built so far. And I've got water running now in this tote there in front of us. And here in a couple of minutes it will actually go into a drain cycle. And I'll show you how that works. Well, the first thing we need is we need a large container to hold water. And that's what we have here. It's called an IBC tote. I believe they're rated at 265, 275 gallons. A nice thick plastic. And this aluminum framing. Okay, and it sits on top of a pallet. So we decided, we have this located in our garage. We decided to keep it on a pallet. And down below is a uh, cover. Okay, and a ball valve. So we could drain that if we need to. Okay. Well, when this tank came, the, uh, the actual tank had a cover on it. So what we had to do to get this off, we had to lift this, this uh, top piece, and there are four screws, I put one on each side that holds this thing together. We had to take that off, we flipped it over on its side, and my son and his friend used some 2x4s uh, at the bottom, and they actually pried it forward, it slid it about 6 inches, and I used a jigsaw to cut all the way around it. There are some markings over here on this tote, uh, in liters, and as you can see there's a 900 mark, and these things normally measure at a thousand liters and we have a mark down here at 600 liters. 600 liters is approximately 150 gallons. 150 gallons is about 1200 pounds of water and based on what I read that seems to be sufficient amount of water to do our experiment. Okay. I've got this wooden post mounted to the uh, to this IVC uh, tote. I've got a power strip. The power strip does get plugged into a ground fault circuit interrupter. And a GFCI is absolutely necessary when you're playing with electricity and water. It's very easy to get some water and electricity combined and it can produce an electric shock. The shock can be painful. It can be fatal. The GFCI is designed to trip around 4 milliamps of current. So before you feel the tingle, it should open up on you got to have one of those. Okay. Now here's the tote. It's a 25 gallon tote. The water level has been rising. Now when the grow bed is filled, it's going to be filled with lava rock and pea gravel. Okay. Now as this level rises, this pump is pumping continuously. And the pump is a submersible pump and there it is. Kind of dark down there. Just pumping water continuously. It's going to fill and we tried this with the smaller tube last night in a different container and honestly it just was too small a diameter on the output side and it continued to fl uh, flood in at a faster rate than it could drain. Went ahead and went for this larger tube. It's about one and a quarter inch and what's going to happen here is when this gets to a certain level uh, this here by the way is called a loop siphon. Okay, so a loop siphon it's the simplest siphon you can find in YouTube. There's something called, uh, I believe, float siphons. A little more complex to construct. Okay, here the level of the water. When the level of the water gets to the level of this loop, the water will begin to flow, and you can see a little bit of trickling now. Here, in about a minute, that level will push over. The last of the air will fall, flow through, and there'll be a solid stream of water as this thing begins to drain. 
I believe this is called an ebb and flow, or ebb and tide, flood and drain system. Uh, these have been determined from what I've uh, under learned from our research to be more effective than just continually running water over the roots of plants. Apparently, uh, you, this thing rises, waters the plant roots, and then it drops and it forces the roots to somehow reach for the water and it stimulates them to grow even more. That's about the base, that's the, the best of my scientific explanation. Mm -hmm. Good. Our water flow starting to increase. The water's been in the garage now for about three days. The temperature of the water is at 55 degrees. We're going to experiment with some comet goldfish. It's recommended that they be between 65 and 75 degrees. So, I've ordered a 300 watt heater. That may be a bit too small, but we're going to give that a try to see if we can get this temperature up a bit. Uh, this frame here is pretty strong. We've got this thick board here, a 3 8 inch board. Right now we have about uh, 20 gallons. It's about 160 pounds of water. And earlier I had that along with my 60 pound grandson. And everything survived. The okay, water flow is picking up. I don't know if you can see the little air, air pocket here. Let's get a shot of that. Mm -hmm. You can see a little shadowing right here. Okay, this is getting ready to go over. There's a little bit of movement. There it goes. See that? Alright, here comes the flow. Okay, so now we have a really good siphon going on here. And that's going to drain down to a point right above here. Here in about a minute you'll, feel, you'll hear a little bit of a gasping of air. And then air will pick up and the siphoning process will stop. Now, as far as the return, I've seen two things out there. One is you pour water into the, uh, the tank like this and it actually introduces more oxygen. And having oxygen within the water is important for the fish. I've also seen systems where this extends down into the water and causes a circulation. And the circulation has the benefit of rubbing against the interior walls and actually cleaning off any kind of algae that might develop. We don't have any experience with that right now. That's only what we've uh, read. Oh, well, I do have this little air pump, a little air stone down there. And when the water's not flowing, you actually see a little bubble here and there. Haven't figured out if that's sufficient or if we need something much bigger. Oh, there you go. All right. The drain cycle has ended, and now it's beginning the, uh, the flood cycle once again. Now down here I have the, uh, the lava rock and the pea gravel that I obtained from Lowe's. And I've got two bags of uh, lava rock and two bags of pea gravel. I'm going to put the lava rock in here first, followed by the pea gravel. And I, I, I have a feeling by the size of that toe and the size of that bag, I probably need a couple more bags of rock. But I'm going to bring the rock up to about this level. And the water level itself is going to... We're going to keep it regulated so that it comes about a half inch from the surface. I understand if water gets on top, it will actually cause algae to form on form, and that's something we don't want to happen. Okay, what will we be planting? Well, over here, the end of last year, I actually planted some seeds, and my wife planted some flowers over here. Here's some green beans, some bush green beans, some, some leftover seeds from last growing season, some tomato plants, some very tiny, and some lettuce. We're going to simply pull them out, separate the, uh, the soil, rinse the roots thoroughly, put them inside, and hopefully the, uh, the fish will produce enough uh, poo and pee uh, to, uh, to um, provide the nutrients. For fish, we're going to experiment with something called a comet goldfish. Uh, they have a ton of them at one of the local pet marts, and I think they're anywhere from 13 to 23 cents a piece. So. We're going to try to populate this with anywhere between 25 and 50 fish. Uh, we're going to do that after we brought the temperature up again to at least 65 degrees. I've had a chance to clean the, the water out a little bit better. And had a chance to check uh, pH. Uh, we can also check for uh, ammonia, uh, nitrites, and nitrates.
Well, that's about it here for part one. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but just God bless uh, YouTube for uh, having folks who share. So I hope this will help benefit people. And I hope to produce a part two here once I've uh, I built the grow bed and maybe even picked up some fish. Goodbye now.